All right, and welcome back to another episode of the Laces Out Podcast. This is week 10, and with me on the call, we got Jay Bunk. How's it going, man? What's up, man? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. We we missed you last week, but glad you are here this week. And I think we're missing Waterboy uh, for a possible time period. I don't know if, if he's going to pop in mid-through, but we do have to get this episode out. Um, you know, I, I got a softball game, so I got to get this one done. But um, anything, uh, any big games really happen in week nine for you? Or did you hit any parlays or anything good go your way? <laughs> Uh, it was a rough week, especially betting wise. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on that. Saints screwed me big time. Oh, now you remind me. No wonder I was yeah. blacking out on, on what happened in week nine. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Panthers. Every time you know you want to bet against them, that's whenever they kick you in the nuts. And yeah, I gotta stop ex- throwing. Uh, I gotta stop throwing the same team in multiple parlays because they screwed me on like three or four. They ruined your whole weekend because they yeah. were in too much. I, I that, well, the thing is, is you feel so good about it before mm-hmm. until the first ten minutes of the game. They're like, uh oh. But no, I, I mean, even all the way t- toward the very end of that uh, that Panthers game, I still thought the Saints were gonna end end up on top, and then uh, they couldn't get it done. They couldn't get it done, so they fired their coach. What, what what's your thoughts on uh, the coach getting fired? I mean, I, I think that's a pretty smart idea after you losing to one of the worst teams in the NFL, if not the worst. Yeah, I mean, no, I think I think the writing was already on the wall. They they started out, you know, the first two games, everybody was like, "Oh, Saints are Super Bowl contenders, best team in the NFC," and <laughs> and then they lost every game since. Um, yeah. And then you lose to the Panthers. <laughs> uh, I think that's the uh, that's the bar. <laughs> yeah. Well, after what they did to us uh, in Week One, I mean, I don't think anyone saw that coming, uh, especially uh, the Saints. I mean, I don't even think the Panthers thought they were going to pull that one out, but they eventually they did. Now they get to go up uh, to London, and they get to play another two and seven team, being the the New York Giants. What's your thoughts on that? Who's going to win that one? Or are you going to stay away from this one on the on betting? To this well, weekend? first off, I'm not getting up early to watch that game. But <laughs> there you go. Second, secondly, um, you know, I got Malik Neighbors. He's my boy in both leagues. So I'm just hoping him and Danny Jones uh, go wild on the Panthers defense. Feel that. For sure, and uh, is Tr- is Tracy in? I know he was banged up a little bit last week, but he was able to play. Um, yeah, the last I, I saw, he's going to be in, so he'll probably assuming, run wild. Yeah, I'm assuming he's going to have a good game. Um, but, uh, well, you know what? Instead of uh, – we don't have to recap too much of last week since we both had some terrible <laughs> weeks. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and jump into week <laughs> 10. Um, we got a game tonight. The Bengals versus the Ravens. And they played each other before, and it turned out to be an overtime game, a very high-scoring game as well. And uh, I, I think the total was 70-plus points too. So uh, w- what's your thoughts on this Thursday night football game? Yeah, man, I'm hoping for a good game finally. Primetime has completely yeah. been ass uh, this year. Um, even even like there's been a couple primetime games with the Chiefs in it, and – you know, you thought it was going to be a, a good game, and it just hasn't. It's, it's just been disappointing. Yeah. So I'm hoping, you know, Ravens, obviously, they've looked like the best team in the AFC all year, and the Bengals are on the come up. Looks like they're turning things around. So I'm hoping it's going to be a great game, man. I've got some uh, I've got some involvement fantasy-wise. Obviously, Derrick Henry and – I was able to pick up Gasecki for my bye week tight end this week. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I mean, I'm hoping it's a high scoring game, a shootout, and uh, hopefully we can make some money too. <laughs> I think it. I th- oh, for sure. I, I think uh, it will be. And the reason I say that, I think I will say I'll say it's good for Gasecki. I think he's going to have a good game. Uh, there's no one else to throw to besides Chase right now. Higgins is out. Um, mm-hmm. 
and even the running back, um, Chase Brown, I think he's got some bruised ribs and stuff. So yeah. you don't really know how that's going to look when you get hit by one of the number one, like rushing defenses uh, in the league. And mm-hmm. it just takes a few shots from the Ravens players. And you might want to, you know, the thing is, I think even their backup, isn't Moss out and yep. um, their fullbacks out. There's a the, Ra- <laughs> the Bengals run games in trouble. I mean, it's it's nothing. Uh, so I, I do see Burrow throwing a lot of balls tonight. So it just depends if they're going to be good or not. Because uh, Jamar Chase is, I mean, obviously top three receiver in the league. Will he be able to slice and dice up the Ravens? We'll see. I mean, I, it was a good shootout last time they played, but they weren't missing this many pieces. Yeah, I mean. Their offense cooked pretty good last time. So, I mean, I expect Chase and Gusecki to get theirs. Um, actually, I have Chase Brown in another week. I traded him today uh, in that deal to get H-Han back. Um, so, I don't have his exposure, but they just sound cool. Herbert, maybe he gets a little run uh, if he's banged up, but I don't see them running too, being able to run too much against Baltimore with their good run defense, so. I would look for it to be a 30-pass game from yeah. Burrow. I hope so. Uh, that, that's where I put a little bit of money on tonight. I put it on the over on, I think, 24-and-a-half completions for Joe Burrow. I, I think he's going to have to do a lot of check downs. I think he's going to have to throw the ball a lot. So why not go the over on completions? Because the Ravens, on the other hand, that team's been rolling. And it's not just from the run, even though they're number one in the run. It, it's their passing too so they they got the mm-hmm. dual threat lamar just he, he just looks like the mvp this year he i mean he is just doing everything right and uh and then you uh, you adding derrick henry to the mix is just is deadly so they're <laughs> starting to hit their stride and the Bengals defense not so hot against any good team so I, I definitely see the Ravens running up the score. I just hope Joe Burrow can keep up with them to make it a, a decent game. I still need them to cover, I think, six. So, <laughs> Ravens win by six, please. Um, <laughs> other than that, yeah, I, I think we finally got a good Thursday night football. So, I'm happy about that. Um, going forward to Sunday, um, is there any games that you really want to kind of highlight? Um, one game that kind of intrigues me is the uh, Steelers versus Commanders. Um, Jane Daniels, you know, he's been he's been playing lights out this year, but I'm curious to see going up against a stellar Pittsburgh defense. You know, how does he how does he fare against them? Um, I'm just kind of curious that you know they keep rolling. Um, and then Pittsburgh, same you know, same thing. Russ has been in there a few weeks now, and um, Washington's defense has played okay, but I mean, yeah, they're vulnerable still. So, curious to see, you know, can they get their offense rolling? And I expect that to be a pretty good game, man. I, but I'm just really curious to see how Daniels does against their defense. Yeah, yeah, no, that that is a game that I I definitely want to highlight too. And I believe it or not, I mean, I don't think this is that hard to even say. Um, because I think this is a 50-50 pick em in my eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I picked Steelers in our pick em this week. And yeah. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Like, I mean, I always like to cover the defenses first. It's like, all right, well, you know, you, you give me two teams, I think the defense first. Because if you can't score points, you know, how are you supposed to win? And yeah. the commanders have been scoring a lot of points. But the Steelers' defense is is definitely a you know they're a force to be reckoned with, and even though they're starting to hit their stride, I I think this is a big challenge to them. So yeah, I think it's gonna be a good game to watch. Um, that one's definitely gonna be on my red zone. <laughs> I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm sure of that. Um, but and then also how Russ has been just slicing and dicing even good defenses. So mm-hmm. Commanders aren't the best defense. Um, so I, I think he might just, he might put up some points himself. So right. I don't know. I, I, I definitely lean Steelers in that. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. I mean, and that's kind of what I was getting at. Like, does Jaden, does Jaden have enough, you know, early on in his rookie season, even though he looked great, you know, going against Watt and, 
a uh, a stellar defense like the Steelers, you know, can they find a way to win? Yeah. Um, looking forward. What about the Lions Texans game? That's going to be going on Sunday night, and the Lions they 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 even took out the Packers in Lambeau. And they're four and zero on the road. They're staying on the road. They're headed to Houston, going up against the Texans, who are four and zero at home. So this is where it comes down to uh, who can thrive in their uh, situation. Uh, obviously, you would rather be the home team. You got the the you know the crowd behind you, but it doesn't look like it's been bothering the Lions whatsoever. So I'm I'm leaning Lions on this, and and I think it's going to be a I don't know. I think the Lions can win by probably 10. Yeah, I agree, man. Lions Lions have looked, I mean, probably like the best overall team. Yeah. Uh, you know, because even the Ravens, as good as they've looked, they've had some terrible games as well, like losing to the Raiders, losing to the Browns. Um, the Lions have probably looked like the overall best team. And, and I mean, Texans... <sighs> Texans outside of a few good like individual performances like Joe Mixon and and Tank Dell having a few good games, they haven't looked great as a team uh, this season. I don't think as good as what we kind of thought coming into the season. Um, so yeah, I, I would probably take the Lions as well. But that, I mean, speaking of prime time, that's got the potential to be another good prime time matchup. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the Lions, their only loss was to the Buccaneers early in the season, and they only lost by four. Every other win they've, they've won, it's it's by a decent amount. I mean, it's at least by a touchdown. And then if it's not only by a touchdown, it was like against the Vikings who they won by like two. Yeah. So, you know, and that was the Vikings who were rolling. They were, you know, doing their thing. So, I mean, the Lions definitely I, – I, I definitely would put them number one because they got the defense. You look at Baltimore, we talked about them earlier, how big of a threat their offense is. And, yeah, they got a good pass rush – or not pass rush, sorry, uh, run defense. Mm -hmm. But the Lions got clicking all over. I mean, you can throw a little bit against the Lions, but it's, it's nothing compared to, uh, you know, what you can do. Uh, yeah. So I mean, you you got that offense. You got the double-headed uh, running backs. You got Amon Ross, St. Brown, and it's like okay. And then okay, my fourth choice or fifth choice is Sam Laporta, a guy who's already popped off in a previous season. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're loaded. They're loaded, and uh, and they're starting to shine. So you know, get behind the coach on this one, biting some kneecaps off. But. Uh, is there any other games besides a few of those? You want to talk about um, the players? The one that kind of caught my eye is Denver, Kansas City. Um, I might take Denver to cover the spread. It's minus eight right now for Kansas City. I like that. Um, Denver normally plays them pretty tough and have beat them in recent seasons. Um, I mean, honestly, Kansas, I mean, I don't think Kansas City's offense has looked incredibly great. Uh, their defense, I feel like, has won them more games than their offense. Even though, you know, you got Patty and he's going to come through when he has to, but Denver's got a great defense. Bo Nix has been playing well. Uh, see how he can do against Kansas City's defense, who has looked really good so far as well. Um, but I think they can keep it close. I like that. Do you think that line... This is for just me and you talking. Uh, <laughs> do you think that line moves higher than eight? Because if that, if that, if you think that's going to go to eight and a half or nine or whatever, mm. I'm, I'm definitely down to bet that. I don't know, man. I kind of could see it coming down to seven. It could. So it definitely so could because I'm with you. The, the Chiefs haven't covered eight besides two games this season. Mm-hmm. And the Broncos keep it close as a division game. Yeah, I'm with you on this. Like, I'm, I'm definitely Broncos. The Chiefs, like, this is what I covered, I'm pretty sure, last week. Um, it could have been two weeks ago. Um, but I was talking to, to Waterboy, and, you know, he's a Chiefs fan. 
So I was saying, you know, they're just getting enough to get the job done. They're they're not really trying right. to blow out these teams. They haven't been like targeting one player, you know, one after the other. They're just trying to get to the playoffs. That's all they care about, mm-hmm. and then they're ready to run up the score. Um, and that's kind of just how they've been playing throughout the whole season, and right. it's been working. <laughs> they haven't lost, so yeah. they're gonna they're going to probably win the game, but. I don't think it, it's going to be a close one. It's going to be within probably, I would say, six, mm-hmm. seven. Like, I, yeah. I, I don't see it going past a touchdown. Yeah, I agree, especially the way Bo Nix has been playing. You know, he can do it with his legs. Yeah. Um, he's been doing it. He's been passing well as well. I mean, he lit – I mean, you're talking about the Panthers, but he lit up the <laughs> Panthers. I mean, he was yeah. just going all over the place, but – um, Kansas City does have a good defense, so we'll see. And it's in Kansas City, um, which is obviously an advantage. But I just think a division game, you know, the total is only at 41.5. I see it being low scoring, um, kind of a defensive struggle kind of game, probably more field goals and touchdowns. Yeah, I agree. Um, I could just, yeah, I could just see them covering eight. I, I mean, you're giving them a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, that seems doable to me. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And Bo Nix is starting to, you know, he's he's played a few games now, right? Like, it's not his first couple games as a rookie going out there, going up against the Chiefs. Like, no, he's seen good defenses uh, throughout the season. And I, I think he's going to be able to chip away, get those first downs, just keep trying to chip away, get first downs, first downs after first down, rather to go for a deep play because you don't want Mahomes on the field. You want to keep him off the field. and. That's what I'm assuming what their game plan is going to be is just, hey, let's just try to get that first down. If he, Even if it takes us all the way to third or even a fourth and one, let's just keep this clock going. Uh, yep. I, I see a low-scoring game for sure. I see a lot of kicks. And I, I, I feel like whatever kicker's better, honestly, could win this. So right. we'll see. Um, but I do like hitting that plus eight. I just, man, if that thing goes up higher, <laughs> I'm definitely going to pull the trigger on that. Oh, I agree. I'll, I'll I mean, go. at that point, I might just do a ladder. Like, I might lock in minus eight now, and it's a good yeah. roll. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. That way they can't snipe you and move it to minus seven, and then you get a push you know, they will. on a touchdown. Right. <laughs> they will if you don't. I'm sure by the end of the show, it's going to be a, a, a minus six and a half for, for the Chiefs. Right. <laughs> but um, let's look. I would have been excited about that 49ers Bucks game. Um, obviously, get McCaffrey coming back. We don't know how much of a workload he's going to get. I'm sure they're going to ease him in. Um, yeah, so you still probably see a little bit of Jordan Mason, I'm assuming. And the Bucks, I mean, they lost everybody. They're 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 playing hurt. So going up against the 49ers defense, I th- I, it's going to be tough, man. I, I think the 49ers are going to come out on top. But I don't know. Bucks are that. That's that fighting team, man. You always mm-hmm. have that one or two teams that are just pesky. They stick around. They're all these games. They they surprise you on games that you don't expect them to do anything. And that's Baker Mayfield for you. I mean, he's right. been shocking the world with his stats, and the guy's been yeah. scrambling like Kyler Murray. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's been uh-huh. running around. So it's been it's been fun to watch uh, them play, though. I will say that that offense has been pretty good. It's just now. You, you took away two of their best weapons, and yeah, you know they're you're, they're definitely hurting. Yeah, I mean, I think their goal right now is just getting the playoff. You know, um, and if they can get, you know, Evans back, that's obviously a big piece. Um, Otten has stepped up in his absence; he's looked really good. But um, if they can get Evans back, at least I know they'll still be missing Godwin. But yeah, you at least have one you know, of them. Yeah, I mean their defense is, is good enough to where if they can if they can score they can be in any game. But yeah, I agree with you. I'll take Sam Fran in that. Uh I mean rather than I mean, I guess Monday night's not a bad game, but still stick it on Sunday. We'll talk about a little bit about the Jets Cardinals. The Jets, I mean <laughs> they're one and four on the road. But um you know they they finally they finally got that they they just won right they just beat the Texans right yeah so they finally got that win under their belt with Rodgers <laughs> I mean this late in the season kind of it's like hey 
we're just gonna throw it up cardinals has been kind of that team that i was talking a little bit about like the uh, buccaneers they, they stick around in games at late games and somehow when it's a close one they always sneak in that win so um for example against the chargers they won 17 15 uh the dolphins 28 to 27 and that was within the last three weeks right there so and then even later er, earlier in the season the 49ers played them and they won 24 to 23 so when they win it's it's barely but um what, what do you what are your thoughts on this one i would probably take the jets man i mean cardinals i feel like have underachieved all year um I, I mean they were one of the nfc favorites i think going into the season well so the jets um, the jets definitely underperformed i mean the jets are definitely underperformed as well but i I see them on the rise. Um, I mean, they look they look good last week, right? I mean, Aaron Rodgers and Devontae finally hooked up, and their defense is always stout. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it, it, the the Jets baffle me, honestly. I mean, that <laughs> that much talent on offense with Brees and Devontae and Garrett Wilson. I know Aaron Rodgers is as old as Methuselah, but um, he's still got an arm. Um, so I, I don't know, man. That one baffles me with how good their defense is, why they have been so bad. But um, I just trust them a little bit more than the Cardinals. I, I think they're on the rise. And Cardinals, it seems like they haven't been able to find their identity all year. Like, are they a, are they a James Conner run, run first yeah. play action? Are they a... Are they a pass heavy Marvin Harrison twenty targets a game? Like it's just so inconsistent. It's like they don't know who they are. Yeah. Um, so they've had a hard time, I feel like, um, making their playmakers um, you know, utilizing their playmakers to the best of their ability. Yeah, this is a so, coin flip, I think. I yeah. mean for sure. It, it, it literally like you said, the Cardinals been hit or hit or miss. Like when they when they're on, like it's like okay okay james connor's the guy he's gonna be running uh you know 25 times a game or whatever and then you know the next game you, you'll see him only get a few touches and then kyler murray's over here running around throwing to marvin harris and now marvin harrison is gonna do something and speaking of everyone thought marvin harrison after the beginning of the season was gonna be the guy i mean you saw neighbors how well he was doing and it's like okay marvin's up there though too you know marvin has mm -hmm. a run and then you look at it now you're like no bro marvin harrison's just inconsistent as it can be right now um honestly I, his first look is trey mcbride so I, the only one that i'd like really on that team trey mcbride and connor when it comes to matchups that i mean i don't only like connor unless he's got a favorable matchup um, right. And then when it comes to Kyler Murray, he's uh, speaking of inconsistent. That's that's Mister Inconsistent. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I, I could see it going the Jets' way, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't even remember who I picked, honestly. But it, it is a uh, plus two, minus two. I'm staying away from this game. I'm not. I don't, yeah. I'm not touching this one. Definitely not. But, uh, better than that, for sure. but yeah, I, I I definitely think it's gonna be a a decent game to watch. Um, but maybe not. I don't know. Jets and the Cardinals have been disappointing all season, so that's just like the, the disappointment game. <laughs> but I don't know. The same in the same. I don't know why they put all the disappointing uh, teams in the same window. I mean, they had the Titans versus Chargers. They had the Eagles and Cowboys. They've had the Jets and Cardinals all within that four o'clock hour on the East Coast. And man, I, I might take a nap during that time. Yeah, that's a snooze fest right there, man. <laughs> I'll watch the one o'clock game. See, still see how that Steelers Commanders game and yep. um and that Broncos Chiefs game. And after that, I'm I'm gonna take a nap for sure. Rest up until the night cap. <laughs> yep, yep. Let's see that Lions game. Um, but then the next day, Monday, you gotta find out if you're winning your your teams. But I'll say a lot of teams aren't gonna know who won or lost until after this Monday night game, because you got a lot of game changers in this uh, matchup. And that, you know, you got, we talked about it earlier, A-Chan, you just got him um, in the deal. And then 
Tyree Kill. I mean, he's been doing all right with Tua back, but he hasn't had any crazy high pop-off games. So will that happen uh, on Monday? Um, and then going forward, Waddle. Will he will he waddle his way and get his head out of his ass? Uh, that's, <laughs> that, that's what I'm waiting on. You know, I, that's the reason I made the trade to Waterboy in the beginning of the season because I thought when Tua comes back, Waddle – is going to be a great fantasy player to have on your team, even if it's just a flex spot. But now I'm looking, I'm like, Waddle, when you – I mean, I know you scored a touchdown, but it was like – I think he had like negative receiving yards with a touchdown. And I was like, what the hell? I don't want this. So he's definitely <laughs> underperforming. Um, Tua is still scrambling with his concussion, scares the hell out of everybody. I'm sure the, the, the Miami <laughs> uh, Dolphins fans as well. And the Rams, they got cut back. They got their their reliable guy, and obviously Kyron Williams, who's popping off. So, what are your thoughts on this game, man? You got a lot of superstars on this uh, on the field on Monday. Yeah, it's another game I don't I don't want to bet on unless I'm just doing player props. Um, yeah, I mean Dolphins, I still feel like they're trying to figure it out since Tua's came back. Um, yeah. A-Chain has obviously been a beneficiary, um, not so much for, not so much for, uh, Tyreek and Waddle yet, um, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. I mean, you know, when he, when he was healthy before, they were two of the most dynamic players in the league. Um, and then the Rams, they're another team that's hard to, tough to understand, um, uh, I mean, Cup and Puka have missed a lot of time, but um, I feel like with, with those two back and Kyron obviously being a stud, if their defense, I think that's where they've really been struggling is, you know, Rams teams in the past, like when they won the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, you had Aaron Donald and all those guys, and their defense was like a compliment to their to their offense. But now it's like – it's not like that. Their offense has to just outscore, outscore the other team. Yeah, no, that's a hundred percent. I'm I'm looking at the uh, the scores and everything, and and it looks like their average, like anyone who plays them, is going to put up at least twenty. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what it looks like. Uh, there's only been a couple teams that did it, and they were really damn close. And that was, uh, who was it? I think everyone did actually. No, fifteen, and that was the Raiders. So <laughs> I think I think it's safe to say that they're going to get scored on for sure. I mean, even if it's a struggling Miami team who hasn't found their identity, I think I think I think it could be Monday. It it I will say this is the Dolphins' last chance this this for this season. If they don't come out on top on this one, then the Dolphins are frauds until the next season. I think because I, I think I mean what what's their record after that? They'll be two and seven, and you can't start that way if you're gonna, you know, make the playoffs. So I don't know. Rams, you got Kyron Williams who's scoring almost every every game. I mean, he's literally right under uh, Henry when it comes to that. But uh, I, I do think I do think the Dolphins they uh, figure it out. Because I, I do think they can outscore the Rams. They're going to put up at least 20 on them. And all really all of Miami just needs to make a couple stops. So, right. But that, that line literally is a coin flip. It, it's even if you want to bet Miami and it's minus 120 for the Rams. I mean, the Rams do have home field advantage, so they do got that edge. But right. I don't know, man. I, I, well, what are your thoughts, though, besides be, – I mean – you who on who's gonna win this if you had to pick? It's tough, man. I'm slightly leaning Dolphins because um, I feel like they've got the better defense. Um, but I feel like overall the Rams are a little bit better. Yeah, team, maybe, but. I don't know, man. I would say the I would say the Dolphins, man. Honestly, that's like that's my gut. Better defense, defense wins championships. I think they get a couple stops, and then 
Achan goes wild. Maybe Tyree gets loose down the field for a long TD. Maybe Waddle uh, sneaks in. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe he waddles in. Hey, so uh, I'm looking back. I I before I uh, we started the show, I picked the Rams. After listening to myself talk and you talk, I'm switching that. I'm still gonna keep it. Um, the total, I, I still think it's gonna be like a. I don't know, 44 or something like that. But right. th- that game's a coin flip, and, and the more you talk about it, it's like, yeah, if if the Dolphins just have a few stops, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, th- I really do think they're going to – their offense is going to be okay. They got the dual threat just kind of like uh, the Rams. And the Rams got Kyron. Okay, the Dolphins got Achan. Well, the receivers, yeah. they got Cup. You got Tyreek Hill. So, I mean, it's – I don't know. And if you look at their defensive ratings too, like um, like Miami's defense, total yards allowed seventh overall, passing yards allowed fourth overall, rushing yeah. yards allowed thirteenth overall. Then you go to the Rams, total yards allowed twenty fourth overall, passing yards twenty fifth overall, rushing yards twenty fourth overall. So it's like a top ten defense versus a top twenty five defense. Yeah. The, the thing is, the Rams have been winning games. In, in the last five, they won literally the last three. And then for the Dolphins, in their last five, they've only won one, and that was against New England. But mm-hmm. looking back at those games, it's not like they're blowouts or anything. Like, they lost to Buffalo by three. They lost to the Cardinals by one. They lost to uh, the Colts by six. So nothing crazy. I mean, where one possession couldn't have changed that game. And when I see that, I'm like, yeah, you have this many losses. You're looking for, you know, you got everybody rallied back. I mean, you guys are barely just not winning games. I think I think something comes to you eventually. You're going to have to get a win. I don't, I don't think you just go on that streak. But, like I said, I think this is their last chance. That's why I'm, go- I'm back in the Dolphins. That's why I switched my pick. I, I really do feel like the Dolphins come out, but... We'll see Monday on eleven eleven. Make a wish. I wish that the <laughs> Dolphins win. <laughs> you can get behind that. There you go. What and it looked like the opening line was minus two and a half Rams. So the money is going toward the uh, Dolphins way, probably. So that's right. that's not uh, not looking bad. Um, going well. I guess we'll transition a little bit to the um ucfl a little bit so i'm going up against wit yep i'm not feeling good about it but if i do win it helps you out but same thing with you bunk i need you to win against fink which i don't think you'll have a problem doing i i, I do I, I i looked at the matchup i peaked it earlier i think you're good but <laughs> you never know it's the nfl we'll never know um and then the one the bad thing I saw was my number one uh get the guy in our my division which is Waterboy, um our other co-host, and he's going up against uh, Steel City. So I'm not looking forward to that. I, I'm pretty sure Waterboy gets this one done. It's damn near free win, but it's the NFL. You never know. And uh, and yeah, I, I think is there any other games that you, you're highlighting? on the ucfl that could be a close one or or for a division or something because i kindle uh the fraud squad versus the bob squad we got a lot of squads <laughs> that one's gonna be is gonna be good because hex definitely has the stats on paper he's right. got the projection or uh, but bob squad have somehow figured out a way to go six and three yeah. And uh hey, whenever you're hot, you're just hot. So we only got three six and three uh teams, and that's our co host Waterboy, Bob Squad, and the guy who I'm playing, that's Wit. So hey, hats off to the only three guys who have six. Um they uh they're looking all right. But someone did highlight your best receiver if you're the Bob Squad is Sutton. That's the only, that's your best receiver, so not looking good on that. But his his running backs look pretty damn good. Well, unfortunately, he beat me last week with Sutton being his best receiver, so I can't say much. Did he start uh, JSN? No. 
Oh man, I didn't I didn't look at yeah. that. Wow, I got that's lucky bad. He didn't, but Hang he's on, still I'm peeking it now. 30. Woo, he put up 151. It's because yeah, his whole team played besides DJ Moore. DJ Moore, he just decided to not do anything. But if he would have put J- JS in in oh, his spot, blew the doors off. Damn! <laughs> that would have been crazy. I mean, I got lucky to even keep it close because, um, you know, Hunt had a decent game and my guys yeah. got it up to 121, but which is a good game. I mean, most weeks, if you score over 120, you know, you're, yeah, you're going to be. take that. Right. Well, and you had a, a lot of get, you know, go down early. I had him yeah, down that killed in, me. in uh, my work league. And so I wasn't happy about that. And the thing is, guess 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 how many points I lost by. Uh, you're gonna love this. Three. <laughs> and he could have got that man. I mean, he only oh, had yeah. I think two at the time or one or something. It was something. Yeah, he, he the game just started. <laughs> and yeah. then I look up. They're like Olave carried away in a stretcher. And I'm like, really? <laughs> and and yeah, that's. That was just my whole weekend. We, we were very similar where we both threw in the Saints in yep. uh, too many. And I think Olave going down definitely didn't help that situation. Olave and the Saints both screw us. Yep, absolutely. It's okay. You know, it, it happens. It happens every NFL season. You're going to get screwed a few weeks. And you're just going to have to eventually just take it. So, um <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and end this before this podcast gets any weirder yep that sounds like a good idea <laughs> <laughs> all right man if uh have anything else to say or you're good to call it i'm good man you do your part this week and beat wit for me and i'll try <laughs> to do my part and beat uh pink for you i will be yelling at my players tonight coach a lot all right same to you We'll see you you next week.